Coming up next on Flightline News, we find out when our new Piper Arrows arrive and learn about the 50-hour inspection on the Cessna Skyhawk. Flightline News starts right now. Welcome back to another edition of Flightline News, I'm Bob Thomas. It's only February, but it's time to start thinking about your flying plans for the rest of the year. Here's Brian Herget on summer and fall flight registration. Flight registration for summer and fall semesters is coming up. If you're going to be flying for any part of the summer semester or flying during the fall semester, make sure you come by registration. We'll be doing registration for seniors, graduate students, and students with priority registration on February 24th through the 27th. And we'll be doing junior registration on February 28th and March 3rd. If you are a sophomore, your registration dates will be March 4th and 5th, and freshmen will be on March 6th, 7th, and 10th. For juniors, seniors, priority registration students, and graduate students, we'll be doing registration in Flight Ops Room 115, that's the scheduling office, and for sophomores and freshmen, we'll be doing that here on the second floor balcony. We'll be doing registration from 8.30 in the morning to 11, and then again in the afternoon from 2 until 4. When you come to register, make sure that you have a primary and alternate flight block just in case the one you want is already taken. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at hergetb at erau.edu. Thanks, and we look forward to seeing you. Shortly after registration concludes, the week of spring break is an opportune time to catch up on your flying. The flight department will be offering discounts on training all week long. From March 15th through the 23rd, save 10% on aircraft dry rates, instructor rates, and FTD rates. Keep in mind that this offer is subject to resource availability and that rentals and refreshers are not included. In addition, keep an eye out for posters around the Flight Ops Building and College of Aviation Building with details on how you can get a one credit waiver on tuition this summer and up to $1,500 in ETA credit. New arrows are on the way. Embry-Riddle has ordered five new arrows from the Piper factory in Vero Beach, Florida. At Piper Aircraft, the majority of the aircraft is actually manufactured here in Vero Beach. In fact, 80% of the aircraft components are manufactured here at the factory. So when we begin building an aircraft with the initial fabrication phases, that part of the process starts with building a lot of the smaller components that make up the entire aircraft. So the actual assembly of the aircraft itself doesn't start to a little bit further down the road. So the first several months, of the build process actually involve the fabrication of these smaller components. And then as we approach the delivery time frame, the aircraft is actually assembled, the wings are mated to the fuselage, then the engine is hung on the aircraft, and then following that we begin the actual flight testing of the aircraft and then finalize the process with the installation of the interior, and then of course the most important part, the paint. The arrows are in the initial phase of fabrication and will be ready for delivery to us in April and May. From start to finish, a Piper Arrow takes three to four months to build. In addition to the new arrows, the flight department will be acquiring 21 new Cessna Skyhawks, which are scheduled to be delivered by the end of next summer. Good news on the restricted ATP requirements for current Embry-Riddle students. The FAA has recently approved more majors that qualify for the reduced minimums. The complete list now features aeronautical science, aeronautics, aerospace studies, aviation maintenance science, air traffic management, and applied meteorology. These majors are for students who completed their flight training under Part 141. We're still waiting to hear back from the FAA on the exemption for 142 students and our ATP CTP course. Embry-Riddle's annual family weekend was hosted earlier this month. About 870 students and family members registered for the weekend's events. The College of Aviation started off Saturday morning with a greeting from Dr. Brady, who had his notes for his speech delivered to him by the Unmanned Aerial Systems Program via remotely controlled quadcopter and made quite a hit with the audience. Following a lunch in the queue hangar, which was packed to capacity, there were 17 different demonstrations and activities that families could participate in throughout the afternoon. These included a virtual air race in the Cessna Skyhawk simulators, a live jet engine demo, and tours of the AMS department's recently donated Gulfstream 3 jet. In a first for the College of Aviation, every activity was sold out in the first 15 minutes of the registration period. Despite the gloomy weather, spirits remained high among family and students, many of whom are already looking forward to next year. Now let's head over to the maintenance hangar with aircraft technician Dan Stinelli as he walks us through the 50-hour inspection on a Cessna Skyhawk. 
Today I'm going to run through what happens when a Cessna comes in for a 50 hour inspection. Once we perform the maintenance run up out at the run up area, we check for certain things like does the aircraft start okay, which would check the impulse couplings on the mag, and how does it run up? Is it a smooth acceleration? Uh, what is the max RPM? Mag check, oil temperatures. We check everything to make sure all the probes and, on the systems are working fine. Once we uh, bring it into the hangar, we will drain the oil uh, and we'll get an oil analysis from the engine and that'll get sent out uh, to be um, checked for any abnormalities, any metal or debris uh, in the engine oil. Once the oil analysis is taken, we will remove the oil filter, drain it of the oil, and then we'll cut it open and check for, we also check for debris in the oil filter. There's also a last chance filter uh, at the bottom of the sump that'll be removed, cleaned, inspected, and reinstalled with new gaskets. Once the oil analysis is taken and the filters are checked and a new one is installed, um, the new filter will be put on, it will be safetyed along with the last chance filter, and the aircraft engine will be serviced with eight quarts of oil. Instead of using one quart bottles to fill the engine, we have a 55 gallon drum which is uh, connected with uh, air hose and pneumatically powered uh, with a digital counter on it that will uh, service it up to eight quarts. After the oil system is serviced, uh, fresh oil and everything safety, we'll then go to the fuel system and remove the fuel inlet screen attached to the fuel servo. We'll remove the hose and uh, remove the fuel inlet screen, clean it, and uh, usually what we'll uh, get is uh, some debris sometimes, clean it, reinstall it with new O-rings, uh, and we'll also torque it, attach the hose, and then bleed the fuel system. Once the fuel system is properly bled, we go on to check the general condition of the engine. One of the items on the checklist we check for is uh, a fuel system AD where we uh, check the security and condition of the fuel injector lines to make sure they're properly routed, uh, there's no sharp bend radiuses, and that they're clamped in the right spots and there's no movement on them um, to cause any sort of vaporization of the fuel. Uh, some of the other things that we check on the engine are to make sure that all hoses, clamps, and lines are tight and secure. We also check for intake leaks on the intake tubes and check for exhaust leaks on the exhaust tubes and uh, make sure that the clamps on the exhaust are secured uh, and that the bolts uh, are secured there as well. Uh, some of the other things, uh, overall inspection, include just checking to make sure that the magnetos are on properly, uh, that they don't feel loose. Uh, most of the stuff you can tell uh, the condition of the engine by the maintenance run up. As long as it ran, uh, Good, good magneto drop and good uh, max RPM and idle RPM and idle mixture rise. Uh, most stuff you're checking is for leaks uh, and security of the fuel system. One of the few things we'll check is the, um, through the air intake plenum, we'll look up and check the uh, air impact tubes of the fuel servo to make sure nothing's leaking uh, and that uh, nothing's bent, broken, uh, and the security of uh, that system as well. Uh, we'll also check um, just the entire oil system, for oil return lines. Uh, we also check the cylinders, the cooling fins for anything that is bent, cracked, uh, chafing. Um, we'll check the uh, alternator. We'll check to make sure that everything's properly connected with a uh, properly grounded and secured. Once the general inspection of the engine is complete, we'll then uh, do a visual walk around of the airframe, uh, which is uh, sort of a glorified uh, pre-flight. Uh, what we'll check there is to make sure that all the control services uh, work properly and um, all the bonding straps are there. Uh, on this case, we happen to find the left brake pads uh, were uh, worn a little bit, so we went ahead and changed those out. Um, other things we'll check uh, on the interior, we'll check uh, operation of all the lights on the interior and exterior of the aircraft. Uh, make sure that the uh, remote ELT switch is working um, and we'll reset the ELT. During the run-up, uh, after it started, we'll taxi to the run-up area and we'll check uh, everything that we checked on the pre-run-up, which is, um, is the aircraft start okay? Um, we'll check to make sure oil pressure comes up into the green. Um, we we'll usually check the condition of all, all the CHT, EGT probes, and uh, we'll check the magneto drop, uh, left and right mags, uh, check the fuel flow, uh, check the oil temperature and pressure, and uh, check the max RPM, 
Uh, once all those uh, engine parameters are checked, we'll then uh, park the aircraft, double check it for oil leaks or any sort of leaks or anything that we missed, and uh, aircraft will be returned to service. A single technician uh, can complete anywhere from uh, two to three 50 hours a day, and they roughly take uh, anywhere from an uh, hour and a half to two hours, uh, depending on the amount of discrepancies you find with your aircraft. And finally, we go to Ivan Grau, Chief Flight Instructor, for this edition of Chief's Corner. Hi, welcome back to the Chief Corners. I'd like to thank all flight instructors and students uh, for continuously being uh, professionals and having the best safe attitude that uh, there is in the business. Um, I'd like to remind all students that spring break is approaching and uh, that could be a good opportunity for you guys to stay behind and uh, catch up in your uh, training course uh, due to the weather that we have had in the recent uh, past few weeks. Um, one more thing that we need to remember is that uh, we need to continue, be, continue being a good neighbor by complying with our noise abatement procedures established uh, to maintain good relationships with all our uh, neighbors. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. That's it for this edition of Flightline News. If you have any comments, suggestions, or future story ideas, please let us know at specialvfr at erau.edu. I'm Bob Thomas. Thanks for watching.